group. So keep looking it's, for that. We're live, baby. All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Dr. Yvonne Laria. And I am one of your hosts today for the Access Rumor Time Conversations. And if the other hosts could introduce themselves. Certainly, certainly. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Geneva Fleming, uh, bringing you greetings from South Carolina. I'm so happy to be able to share in this um, very relevant conversation today. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vanessa Kelly Brew, and I am joining um, this conversation from Elkhart, Indiana. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to be part of these, uh, as Dr. Fleming said, these important conversations this afternoon. Yes, 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 yes. And so welcome, welcome. I hope we have our, our listening or viewing audience and we have a really good topic this evening, this afternoon for a discussion. We're gonna be talking about empathy expressed in everyday experiences. Empathy expressed in everyday experiences. Um, and that is related to social awareness, skill development, okay? And so let's, let's start off with the definition that we are going to use here at GC Scored for social awareness. All right, and I'm going to share my screen here just to just to give you guys uh, the definition from which we are working with this afternoon. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So here's GC Scored's definition of social awareness. It is your ability to be other focused, to be mindful of the other's perspectives, culture, needs, concerns, feelings, and feelings when interacting. It involves demonstrating in substantial, culturally responsive and relative, relatable ways, empathy, compassion, cultural humility, and equity and inclusion toward individuals and societal problems. This is a pact. This this definition is pregnant, okay, with 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 verbs, um, adjectives, nouns, and um, so this is what we're going to be talking about this evening, this afternoon, specifically, specifically, the empathy part. All right, because you can't empath social awareness is empathy. Really, that's that's the that's the core of what social awareness is. It's about being other focused, being mindful of the other. And I just want to bring something to your attention. This the, this whole concept of social awareness and empathy didn't just start with us. Okay, if you look back in Bible times, as far back as the first century. Um, the, the book of James in, in the holy book, the, the Bible, and I'm sure it is in other, in other holy books as well, but I, I am familiar with the Bible. And so in James, James 1 says, and I just want to share this with you so it, you could understand the context of empathy, social awareness. It did not just start with our generations, okay? It didn't just start in this century. It started way back in the first century when James wrote this. James the Apostle wrote this. He said that in James 1, 27, he said that religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, to care for them, to be other-focused, to be mindful of the other, that's how long we have been we have been told <laughs> right to be empathic to be socially aware to show compassion so that's kind of where i want to um begin this conversation 
And here is a statement, a, a quote, empathy is an action and gets its fuel energy from the mind. Okay. Empathy is an action and it gets its fuel from the mind. So let's, let's have a conversation. How does empathy, how does empathy show up in your everyday experiences? How is it showing up? Mm -hmm. Vanessa, I yield to you first. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I, you know, one of the things that I will say, like in my morning prayers is always God use me. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, uh, in whatever way that you see fit, you know, um, use me to be able to connect um, with someone else, to help someone else along the way so that they can see like your Holy Spirit shining through me. And so one of the things that I always say is I don't care if it's a smile or if it's taking time to acknowledge someone um, just by saying hello, good morning. Um, and I will say, like, I am from the South. So one of the things that we always do in the South is we, we ask, how are you? And it's not just... Um, something that we throw out there, like we, we want to know, how are you? Mm -hmm. How do you be, you know, how is your spirit? Right. And so that is the thing that in trying to um, show empathy, this mm -hmm. action word, mm -hmm. you know, that is how I do that uh, in trying to connect with people because I want people to know that I see them. Right. And that mm -hmm. I, I, I care. <laughs> I really care about how you are, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, I believe a lot of times um, that will catch people off guard mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's not something they are mm -hmm. used to. So mm -hmm. when I ask, how are you? I'm standing there waiting for an answer. <laughs> I'm not just on the fly. I'm not like, hey, how are you? And and keep it moving. I'm standing there because I want people to know that I see you and I really do care. So for me, that is the way that I show empathy. Mm -hmm. I treat people the way that I want them to treat me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You see them. I like how you, you said that, yeah. Vanessa. And sometimes we have to stop individuals in their tracks because most people, when you ask that question, their mind is so used to it being a generic question. Mm -hmm. Like they really don't, they really don't really mean how I'm doing. You know, some, sometimes you really have to say, no, for real. Like, how are you really? Yeah. Because I'm sure we've all had those situations where, you know, we're walking down the court. Hey, how you doing? Fine. People give the the, the one word response in mm -hmm. answering to the question. And it's an unconscious, mindless, that's how I describe it, type of response. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. kudos to you for, you know, going that extra step and expressing mm -hmm. how much you really do care to know how mm -hmm. a person is doing. Mm -hmm. um, for me, um, you know, I, I, I recently retired in higher ed, but I'm still very much so engaged in higher education and how empathy shows up often uh, for me, even now, even after retirement is, you know, a student um, coming to me and expressing, expressing disillusionment with where they are in their studies, like they're planning to graduate, but it looks like they're not going to be able to graduate. And I'm, you know, I present myself um, in, in a way to uh, let them let them know about the possibilities. You know, try to help people understand that um, what they're seeking is possible and mm -hmm. to help them identify options. But mm -hmm. to really, the thing that causes me to do that is walking in their shoes. It's like, wow, you've mm -hmm. invested this time and this money. Surely there must be a way 
um, for you to do what you need to do. And even if the time frame needs to be stretched beyond what they originally planned, I help them to paint that picture of possibility as to when it can happen, you know, and to help to help put them on a track of making it happen. So, you know, it's about, uh, you know, recognizing their angst about not being able to accomplish what they set out to accomplish and them seeing nothing but uh, doom and gloom. Uh, but the, having the ability to to walk in their shoes, that's the only words I can come up with right now, mm -hmm. to feel what they're feeling um, and to uh, to be proactive in presenting another thought, another way to look at that situation. Mm -hmm. That's how, uh, that's the first thing in empathy. I'm sure it's, empathy shows up in a lot of my daily life, but that's the first one that comes to my mind mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So, so thank you. Thank you both for sharing that, uh, your perspectives on empathy and how it shows up, how it's expressed in everyday experiences. So like I, I just kind of gave some context for where this whole idea of empathy and, and, and being other focused um, originated from, you know, from mm -hmm. since, since the first century. All right. Um, so if, we are to really uh, express or show empathy, which is compassion or, and it's an action word, right? And it's fueled by how you see people, how you think about the social other. If we are to see, as Vanessa said, see the other, um, listen to the other, as Dr. Fleming said, how then, does our busy lifestyle interrupt? How does our busy lifestyle interrupt our ability to express empathy in our everyday interactions? How does it interrupt that? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm just chuckling because it does. And I'll probably answer this from the back end and then work into it. Um, the, it's important to me to um, feel rewarded at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And so uh, oftentimes that reward comes in other ways. It's It doesn't come from completing the list of things to do that I have listed for that day. Mm -hmm. Because almost always <laughs> that list gets interrupted or disrupted mm -hmm. by the need, by someone in need. Right. And because I have a heart and mind, uh, I, I have a heart and a mind to feel where others are. And I, I am, uh, I am shaped to help lift people up from, you know, their uh, discouraging place. I will take time to help by taking time to help that does interfere with my list of things to do today. Mm -hmm. So that can be problematic. Um, but I'm rewarded at the end of the day because I've been able to help someone get over the hump, as it were, with whatever mm -hmm. it is that they have to deal with. And then managing my time, managing my time, <laughs> literally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, for how I'm going to get the the other um, work accomplish because it's all important. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it so, does it does impact, but it doesn't impact me in a negative way because mm -hmm. I'm mindful of why my list didn't get completed. So, right. if that list didn't get completed, the, the thing that filled that list was uh, assisting someone who was in need at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'm rewarded at the end of the day. Okay. So, yes. so it, so it does depend, right? It does also depend on what your purpose is for the day. When, like Vanessa said earlier, when she wakes up in the morning, she, she asks the question, um, mm -hmm. who can I serve today? Who can I, how can I be of service? 
When you, I, I believe, I, I, I do a similar thing, Vanessa, mm -hmm. and I'm sure Dr. Fleming does the same thing as well. Mm -hmm. So when what may seem like interruptions, interruptions for, mm -hmm. for um, that present themselves mm -hmm. um, needing empathy, right? Empathy interruptions. How, how about that? Right? <laughs> Empathy interruptions occur. If in the back of your mind, your purpose for that day is to be of service, then those empathy interruptions won't necessarily be an interruption. Mm -hmm. It would be more like an empathy appointment mm -hmm. that you just didn't know about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way, yeah, yeah, a good way to put it. it. I like I really the appointment. Um, because, uh, and that is something I'm going to go back with uh, to what Dr. Fleming just said. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we set our schedules for the day. Right. And when something occurs that is outside of what we have scheduled for the day, mm -hmm. then we do tend to look at those as interruptions because we are on a schedule. Right. We are right. on a timeline. Right. And we look at this as like that is going to throw us off. Exactly. But. Like what you just said, if my prayer in the morning is God use me, right? That means that I have to have that in my mind, a, a mindset. A mindset. I have to have that mindset and understand exactly what you just said, that um, even though this is not on my schedule, this is God answering my prayer. Right. Mm -hmm. You said you wanted me to use you. I'm not on your timeline. <laughs> I'm your time frame. <laughs> okay. Right. So I, I like that you you brought that up. Is that we always have to be aware and be mm -hmm. open mm -hmm. to allowing things to happen right. in our lives. Yeah. Yeah, I so love have it. Have that flexibility. Flexibility. Yeah. Yes. Have that yes. flexibility. Yes. Um, because part of that, right? So empathy also means um then also means that you you you're creating margin. You're creating a margin mm -hmm. to be to show to show up for somebody. Mm -hmm. And the focus again, remember we talk about being other focused. The focus again is about being other focused. So yes, we have our schedule that is self-focused. We have our to our to-do list, which is who's my to-do list, right. right? Somebody comes up with some, somebody comes with something, some issue, some situation. You know, I just heard, I just heard the other day um that in in this a particular counseling agency uh, you know i'm not calling names i'm not calling countries or anything but there were there was an interaction one of the employees had a situation where their daughter or their, their i think it was their son was in crisis right they were ha having a suicidal ideation moment and the one of the counselors or one of the mental health practitioners in the space uh was asked if they could you know assist the the parent or the adult whose child was in distress psychological distress and the helping professional said Oh, I'm sorry, but I have a I have a, a meeting at uh, in the next ten minutes. I I'm, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Empathy, we're too busy, right? And we and we lose sight, we lose sight of what our purpose is. 
And sometimes it may not even be losing sight. Some of us don't even, may not even know what our purpose is. So that's a whole nother conversation, right? Um, let's, let's stick with the empathy piece. Empathy interruptions can be turned into empathy appointments if we are, if we are clear on what our purpose is when the day comes. So if busyness could be, uh, busyness could be considered a risk factor. Empathy is a protective factor, right? Lack of busyness could be a protective factor or understanding your purpose and having a mindset is a protective factor, can be a protective factor to um, our, our social emotional wellness um, support and ability to support the other. And so here's where I'm, I'm bridging a gap and just, so stay with me. Seeing empathy as a protective factor in everyday experiences. We are inundated with suicide news. Attempted suicides, suicide, completed suicides. Um, it is everywhere from celebrities to regular people like you and I. How could empathy may not eliminate it, may not eliminate the suicidal, the increase in suicides or even suicide considerations or suicide ideations or suicide attempts or at all the different levels or the different stages uh, to completion. But how could empathy, looking at it from a protective factor perspective, keeping in mind the issue of empathy interruptions and empathy appointments, how could we as a society, how could we as a society help individuals with just empathy? You know, I one of the, the things that comes to my mind first is to recognize the the need to listen. Um, um, we've talked already about the busyness being one way, one perspective. You know, but if we're if we could be less tied to our schedule, and I would say our over scheduled life, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so, so that we can be flexible enough to take that moment. Sometimes that's all it requires is a, a moment to listen to someone who is experiencing a bad day or experiencing, um, you know, some uh, something that's, that can be a life-changing decision for them uh, and just needing someone to hear them out, to listen. And and, and 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 being mindful also of how that might put itself. Um, it may not present itself in the way we think it ought to present itself. You know, I used to tell my class that, you know, situations, trouble, problems, they don't show up in a beautiful gift box, gift wrap box with a big red bow on it. It doesn't mm -hmm. just present itself that way. So we have to be mindful. I keep going back to, I think, the, probably the first line in the definition that you read um, on social awareness, mm -hmm. being mindful so mm -hmm. that we can give the necessary focus to someone who um, may, may just say, I need someone to talk to, or eh, I'm not feeling so well. And, and and just having the will with wherewithal to to be present to mm -hmm. uh, express that you know I'm I'm here for you you know I'm here to listen I'm here for you um to open the door 
um, to be warm and genuine so that the person, uh, that door is open and the person can feel safe enough to share, you know, what's on their heart. Mm -hmm. um, but it really, it requires a skill set, though. You know, sometimes people have to be taught that particular skill. Because as mm -hmm. I said, some, um, especially working people are so tied to their schedules, uh, which is the case in point you mentioned, which is you know, someone uh, giving that kind of response saying they didn't have time, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, because I got to, I got to do this, you know, and I got to do that. And I got to, mm -hmm. I got to, got to, got to, got to, when you have someone that's dying over here. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not focused. They're not mindful of the condition of the other person. Mm -hmm. um, I do, I believe, I do believe it requires, it, it requires some skill to be mindful. You know, some people just don't know how to be mindful. Mm -hmm. And so with that said, and Vanessa, I'm gonna come to you for your for your response shortly. But I wanna I wanna bring to our viewing audience some of our opportunities for supporting us as we we increase access to these skills, to the social emotional skills. Um, to the social emotional wellness support programs that GC scored is on a mission. Like I said, on a mission to change the world. That's what we're about. We are here to change the world, to change the way people receive and see and understand what empathy is that it is an everyday experience. You know, you don't have to have any big set of platform. Even if you don't put it on social media, it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. So if you're, if you're showing empathy to someone on the street corner and there's no camera, it, do it. It's still empathy, okay? It's still empathy because you're not getting um, lauded or applauded um, doesn't mean it's, it's not empathy. People need you. We need each other. Okay. We need each other. And GC Scored is here to help you to be, to be a vehicle, um, a, a conduit to, to help you and others in need of empathy to get that support that they need. And so if you go to our websites, um, and I'm, I'm showing this here on the screen where we have our fundraising. We are always accepting donations, monthly as well as annually, um, annual donations. There are varying amounts. There are some set amounts, but there's also varying amounts you give as you are able to. Just understand that the work that we are doing is, is a global work and it is a, a relevant and necessary work, especially in uh, in this world where empathy is lacking, but empathy is so needed. It is so needed. And I'm sure our technical team is putting up on the screen now the um, the information on where you can donate where you can donate and how you can donate to us. Um, and so GC Score helps you with that. We, we teach individuals how to be empathic, how to be socially aware. Again, that information is gonna be on the screen, how you can engage with us, how you can engage with us. And so I just want to give a shout out to some of the people who receive leaving messages and uh, have tuned in to our show today. Uh, Kalisha Aaron says, yes, it does require a certain level to be mindful. Um, then we have Walter Murray. This is, yes, spiritually and socially conscious living. Absolutely. Then Jen Sally. Yes, it's all about mindset. And then Missy, Missy Kuzmanski, excellent perspective. And then we have a question here from one of our viewers. 
Edward Clark, is empathy acquired or innate? Can, before you ask, uh, answer that question, Dr. Right. Larrier, um, that is what I, yeah, that is the question that I have for you. Mm -hmm. um, because I will say, um, as a little girl uh, growing up, in church, and I'm going there because you started out with a, a, the scripture mm -hmm. from where empathy uh, comes, right? Mm -hmm. From the first century. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I learned as a child growing up in the church and then having it being practiced in my home and then out into the larger community is uh, the commandment to uh, love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. And one of the other scriptures that came to mind for me was um, um, love your neighbor as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. So I learned that. Mm -hmm. And so for me, there was a, a higher calling mm -hmm. that I learned right. to love my neighbor because for me, I was taught that this was God's commandment. Mm -hmm. um, and so for people who have not been taught that or who have not learned that, um, how do they then know how to show love or empathy uh, towards their neighbor? And that goes along with the question that uh, yes. Edward has asked. Yes. Is it acquired or is it a name? <laughs> And I think I think I think it could be both, and it has to be both because it is uh, you could teach it. We can teach social emotional. Uh, we can teach social awareness or empathy, and you could. It could also be something that some people are more. You know, you talk about people who are hospitable, who have the gift of hospitality. Is that those people? I believe that's where it makes it innate. Right. And, and some of us have to acquire some of us, us have to learn because it wasn't it wasn't something that anybody in our environment may have exhibited. And but in as I'm saying that, I'm also thinking that how we how we view empathy needs to expand. Because I think many times we have relegated just certain acts, certain actions, or certain um, activities that we engage in as empathic. But I think we have to look at, like Vanessa said, showing empathy could be just a smile and being intentional, right? And so it's not just the big things that we do. It's not just when... You know, I, I know in school, uh, learning to be a counselor, they tell you that, you know, one of the the qualities of a counselor is being empathic, and you know, and being uh, non judgmental. But we also have to keep in mind that it's not just relegated to those settings, in a counseling setting or in a church setting. Empathy is again, that definition is about being other focused, thinking about the social other. How can I just think about, think about somebody you're living in a house with? If they, you know, say this, uh, let's see, I, I so I'm, I'm gonna use myself, okay? Um, I'm at that phase in my life where, you know, I have my own personal summers, even in the midst of winter. And so I keep a window open when the temperature is like five below. And my poor husband is not feeling the empathy at that point. <laughs> okay? He is not feeling the empathy at that point. And so that is a situation of need where it needs empathy. Him, me needing to think about him and he, he needed to think about me and making adjustments. 
So even in those simple situations, yes, right? We have to practice and be conscious about it. Um, I can't just think about my own personal summers. I have to think about how he is having a personal and a real winter. And how could we negotiate that? How could we negotiate that? So those are, those are simple situations that requires empathy. And so you may not naturally just think, oh, you know, uh, I need to have empathy or I need to show compassion or kindness to, to my husband, but it, it may make me have to stop, pause, reflect, and think about him, the social other. And there's so many other ways and um, so many other ways that we could express empathy in our everyday experiences. And I'm wondering, and so to, to, to Edward Clark's uh, quest, question, yeah, it is both. It, is, it doesn't have to be a situation of one canceling out the other. Empathy is acquired and also it is innate. Um, so hopefully that satisfies your question. But I wanna know from, the, the, our viewers, um, and there's a question on here again, Janae, thank you for showing up. Um, and, uh, Tequila Richardson, thank you for showing up. Let's see leadership and management solutions and strategy says, how would a leader or manager show empathy as they lead or manage in a corporate environment? Thank you all for showing up and for joining us. How would a leader or manager show empathy as they lead or manage in a corporate environment? Dr. Fleming, um, uh, Vanessa, any one of you wanna take a stab at that question? We're gonna try and answer the questions from our perspective. And then there's another question. So how would a leader or manager show empathy as they lead or manage in a corporate environment? So do you, are you so, not hearing? You're muted. I How think, are you? Um, Vanessa, can you, um, can you hear me? Message. Muted. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yes, I've, I've been I'm trying to chime in, but I've, I've been muted. Sorry about that. Uh, so the question at hand uh, really uh, fits in what we've been talking about this morning or this afternoon being focused, manage, a manager of a corporation should be, they need to be aware of the makeup of their corporation. I'm talking about staffing, uh, uh, programs, if, if they're the, the leader. Now, that question is, the response to this question can be twofold because I can separate leader from a manager. Um, but, but but Geneva, even before you get that deep, okay, <laughs> before you even get that deep, um, I, I want to just say this: uh, How would a leader or manager show empathy as they lead or manage in a corporate environment? If we keep in mind what our definition of empathy is, is being on the focus. I'm going to put it back up again right, is being other focused. And th that should give us, uh, let me see here. Yeah. That, yeah. that Geneva would help you with the, with your response. I'm gonna share my screen. I mean, that, and that is it. That's what I, that's what I um, was prefacing my statement and saying what we've been discussing from the begin, from the definition mm -hmm. of, um, being other focused, being mindful, mm -hmm. and you know, being aware of the makeup of your corporation, of your business, and focusing focusing in on what the needs of the individuals are in that corporation. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I believe that the expression of empathy adds to productivity. So mm -hmm. being uh, aware of the need to be empathic within an organization could really, you know, boost 
uh, morale and productivity within any given organization when a leader or a manager, you know, takes the time to express that. Um, mm -hmm. And it can be, be the expression like uh, Vanessa mentioned earlier, good morning, you know, showing small acts kindness. Good mm -hmm. morning. How are you today? Is there anything I can do to assist you today? Mm -hmm. um, you know, making yourself, opening yourself up to be available to your team um, are just a few ways that that can happen. Yeah. I, and I think also, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fleming, for that great response. I, in addition to that, think about yourself when you go into work. What are, what are the things that you do when you get to work? Think about how other people do very similar things. So you, I'm a leader, I'm a manager, whatever you want to call me, administrator, any, anything, anybody, right? If each of us thinks about how can I make your day better, it doesn't matter what level of an organization you're in. There, there are things that you can do. There are structures you can put in place. There are systems you can put in place. So maybe you might, as a, as a leader or manager or owner, you might have a, a system set up where before people start doing work, everybody gets to just, you know, hang out with their, uh, their, the people around their cubicle or wherever for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, just, just shooting the breeze, doing whatever it, that's a way of showing empathy in a big corporation or in a small corporation or just in your house. Okay. Um, those are ways you can do that. Then you could also be, if somebody comes, if somebody calls in sick, you could show empathy. You have systems in place. You have, you have diversity systems in place, equity, inclusion, all of those things making sure that you have policies and procedures and and structures that supports the the well-being of the people that work with you and for you geneva we can't hear you love i don't know what oh. how are you getting muted um yeah i'm not doing it <laughs> i wanted to add to what you were saying dr laria something that is so monumental yet so simple is mm -hmm. an open door policy for that leader or that manager to and it's instituted by protocol uh, the staff knows that when the door is open they can't come in at any time with any situation but and so don't expect the door to be open a hundred percent of the time but they know that your leader has an open door policy when the when when the door is physically open that's a very simple thing mm -hmm. the door is physically open anyone can enter in mm -hmm. so that is another way of expressing entity doesn't doesn't take much at all and right. communicating that throughout the organization mm -hmm. my door is open feel free to come in mm -hmm. exactly exactly vanessa do you want to add to that or uh, there's, a, there's a couple of statements. I just want to, as Vanessa gets her thoughts together, um, Rosemary says, reaching a place of understanding of others' frame of reference. This is not an easy skill to develop. No, it's not. It's not. Um, okay. Um, Edward Clark says, there are different types of empathy. Uh, are they related and how? Um, what are the different different types of, or are you saying there are different type, different ways that people express empathy? Of absolutely, if that's what you're referring to as different types of empathy, because if empathy is an action word, which is what we believe, that's our that's our definition, as part of our definition. If it's an action word, yes, empathy is demonstrated in multiple ways as many different people and personalities as we have in this world, I believe those are the different ways that empathy is expressed in, 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 in everyday experiences, in, uh, in diverse settings. Um, and so how they're related, they're related in the fact that 
Um, it is about the bottom line. Are you are you helping somebody else to to cross a bridge or cross the street? In, in I'm talking about not literally. I'm talking figuratively. What are you doing? What am I doing to help somebody else's day to not be as burdensome? And so when we think about when we think about this, what has been happening with COVID and, and the pandemic and the mental health, the mental health pandemic that we're in, okay, we are in a mental health pandemic. And even though COVID may end, the physical health part of COVID may, may come to a foreseeable end. The mental health pandemic is, is at pandemic proportions. And this uh, new wave of, not new, but this wave of suicides across every strata of society um, is one of the results of, you know, co the COVID, the physical health COVID issues is playing a major role in that. It's not the only thing, but it's playing a major role in that uh, this this mental health pandemic that we are in the midst of and uh so yes go ahead vanessa uh yes so dr larrier uh so one of the things i think edward is trying to um clarify from his um point of view it um he says that there is cognitive emotional and compassionate empathy now he's separating them OK, he said, I can be cognitively em empathic mm -hmm. uh, without being compassionate or active. So is that possible? Well, based on our definition. That empathy is an action word, you can think empathically. But, you know, like the same like the scripture I, I started off this morning with, it said you can think about being empathic. But if empathy is a is a is a um, if empathy is an action word, it could start in your mind as being thinking there, right? The it's it's a the the the, the empathy is an action word and it is fueled from the mind by the mind by your thinking. So yes, it could start there. It has to start there. You have to start thinking it, but it does not necessarily actionable until you actually do something with it. So it's not necessarily empathy if you don't do something with it. You're having nice thoughts, you're having positive thoughts, but if you're not doing something about it, then I don't know, in my definition, I don't consider it empathy because my definition of empathy is that it is an action word. So Edward is saying, I can be cognitively empathic, empathetic without being actively empathetic. I guess if it, it depends on how you define the word empathy. Geneva, you want to go say something? <laughs> go ahead, Geneva, go ahead. Thank you, host, for unmuting me. Uh, yeah, to get to Edward Clark's uh, original question. Now, I, I'm in agreement with everything that's being said. I personally, though, believe that it is innate. I believe that as humans, we are shaped with that quality. We may not be aware of it. And that's why mm. people need to be educated so that they can learn how to pull that out. So they may not even be cognitively aware of it, but that doesn't mean that the seed is not in there. So I, I, I believe that as people are taught, they can learn what it not just not only just what it is, but they actually possess the quality to be empathic and then can be taught how to make it actionable. 
Mm -hmm. um, but and so I'm glad, uh, Dr. Larry, you mentioned something earlier about professionals, you know, that being empathic is not limited to professionals. And that's another reason people need to be taught. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the very lay person who didn't even attend school can learn how to, can learn that, hey, I am an, I am an empathic being. How, how can I express that? How does that come about? So it definitely is for every living, breathing human being to recognize um, their empathic qualities and to learn ways to bring it out. Mm -hmm. um, so all of those different types of em empathy, <laughs> you know, that was mentioned, cognitive and all of that. Well, there's some foundational things too, is recognizing that it that it exists and mm -hmm. that there's possibility. I, mm -hmm. I can be caring. I don't have to have a PhD to express em empathy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If I'm living and I'm breathing, and someone presents itself in a way, and and listen, <laughs> that presentation can happen in the most unusual places: the grocery store, the gas station someone yeah. may present strike yeah. of a conversation so recognizing that i have the quality to be empathic we can respond uh appropriately but again mm -hmm. we must be taught and i'm i'm glad that gc scored offers opportunities for people to learn um mm -hmm. how to be uh socially and emotionally aware you know, mm -hmm. social yeah. awareness is a, is a big thing. All the yeah. um, social emotional competencies are necessary. And it's for any and everybody, not just for professionals. Exactly. And so the, so um, we come, it's so sad that we have to come to an end shortly. But I want to say, I want to say something here about uh, empathy and how it can be expressed in everyday experiences, everyday experiences. And why is this important for us to be aware, socially aware, to help slow the tide of this, of what is happening in our world regarding mental health and mental illness and not being so busy where we can't stop to see the other person. I wonder how many times we may have just passed somebody in the hallway if we're back at work or even somebody at home, somebody living in our own space, um, not seeing them because we are occupied with something else, not taking the time to say, well, how are you doing today? How was your night? How was school? Just checking in, all of that, all of those acts and actions, interactions are, should be and are laden with, um, with compassion and kindness because that's what it is, right? Um, because I think if we were able to just connect with people in a very intentional way, people would feel seen, people would feel, um, like they matter. And I think those things can help us as, as, a, as a society to slow the tide of this, what we're beginning to see as a epidemic in terms of the suicides. Um, but empathy, I think can play a very important role in slowing the tide of uh, the suicide suicides that we're seeing and all the other, you know, results or, or, or mental health disorders or psychological distress that we are seeing in our world today. I just want to read some of the things in the chat. Vanessa, you want to add anything at this point? Let me see what's here. Naomi says, what is the point of understanding if we do nothing about it? Exactly. Um, Marilyn, 
Marilyn Robb says, I believe empathy is innate. We can know that by looking at young children, but as we grow, the hurts we experience in society interfere with our ability to use the skills. Therefore, teaching should really be about helping us to clear those blocks created by the hurts. Very well said. Um, Edward Clark says, Simon Baron Cohen wrote a book about zero degrees of empathy. Quite interesting. Okay, Vanessa, what do you want to say? Thank you. Well, thank you so much, audience, for joining us and participating. This this gives us um, this gives us a really good grip on just this just a tiny bit, just a tiny. We just we just barely touching the surface of these discussions about, and our goal is to make accessible to everyone across the globe, understand that they have the, the skills and they have, the, they have access to social emotional wellness support. Mm -hmm. And it is not something that is unattainable. GC Scored is here to help bridge that gap for anyone who is interested. Vanessa, go ahead. Uh, I think I am going to hold off on the question that I have because I think that's going to open up a, diff uh, a whole other conversation uh -huh. and I am uh, recognizing the time that we have. Um, but what I do realize even in some of the comments that we have is that this again is a conversation that is worth having. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that we can continue to have this conversation because um, even um, just recognizing how um, others are understanding mm -hmm. what it means to be uh, empathic or show empathy towards uh, others. Mm -hmm. And so, again, I think this is a conversation that is worth continuing to have. Um, so I really have enjoyed uh, the conversation um, for this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, and again, I'm hoping that we can continue to have this right and before to just continue on that but i want to read some of the comments uh, the other comments in the chat um the if if in the meantime the, the technology team could let us know we this show is going to be on the second and fourth mondays of every month same time the second and the fourth monday of every month so always keep an eye open. All right, so Naomi says, the point of being empathetic is to undergird each other through the difficulties that we are experiencing. Edward Clark says, we cannot be empathetic with everyone who experiences personal challenges. That's exactly correct. And that's why it's important for everybody because I may not be able to reach you, Edward Clark, but somebody in your vicinity who is near to you can show you empathy and you, somebody who is next to you, you can show them empathy. So that's why it's important for us to just inundate the world and individuals with these skills so that everyone has someone next to them who can show empathy. And that is, that is the mission of GC Scored, to educate, equip and empower individuals across the globe so that each of us can have someone who can touch us and make a difference in their lives. So that was a really good point to help us bring this to a close. Any last words, Dr. Fleming? Just um, thanks for the opportunity to share today. And um, to our listening audience, let's become or remain other focused. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, you can support GC Scored through donating online, registering for one of our classes or webinars. Um, you can either donate through the website, everypiecematters.com, and the information is on the screen, or you can cash up us at 
dollar sign GC scored all uppercase, or you can donate by mail, which is 2417 Edison Road, number 6684, South Bend, Indiana, 46660. Again, we just thank you so much. This has been an amazing opportunity and experience, and we will see you the second Monday in February. Blessings, peace. That's right. Bye. Have a great day, everyone.